Moses, Yahweh, I am who I am. Now it's very interesting that Jesus, will you pick up on that in the Gospels? Um, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the door, I am the good shepherd. You know, when he's asked, are you the Messiah? And Jesus says, I am. They got all, oh. But here, in the Old Testament, they said, oh, we can't say the name. Well, God wants us to use his name, but use it properly. To realize that this is a holy name. This name has power behind it. That the Lord wants us to use his name for his glory. Now, obviously, we have the name Jesus. And what does the name Jesus mean, Aiden? <laughs> What's the name Jesus mean? Save us. Save us. Save us. Save us. You have to save us from our sins. I'm just picking up you because I figured. But that's, you know, the word Jesus means he saves us. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. How, how Yahweh, I am who I am, then changes to Jesus, the one who comes to save us from our sins. And so we have these abuses, and, we're, and you know, cursing, you know, God, calling down God's curses, swearing, however. But it's also swearing, you know, standing in the court of law, saying, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And then not telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, you know, kind of stuff like that as well. Obviously using satanic arts, lying and deceiving by his name as well. People abuse his name. God says, don't use my name for that. That's not, that's what not, don't drag my name through the dirt. Um, in the uh, Lord's Prayer, when we pray, um, um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed or holy is your name. Um, that Luther writes that we don't profane God's name. We don't drag it through the dirt. We treat it with honor and respect. And we do that. Now, how do we honor God's name? Oh, let me give you a clue. That's also found in the explanation that what does God want us to do? Call upon him in what? Every trouble to pray, praise, and give thanks. That's what he wants. That's what he calls us to do. The next five the names are going to jump around. Go to question number 45. Go to question 45. This helps answer question 45. You know, what are the names does God have in the Bible? Obviously, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord, Savior, Redeemer. But there are other names here. What I want you to do is read through those two paragraphs and write all those names. Whew. Whew. There are a bunch there. Take about a minute to do that. I must confess, I made a mistake. Write this thing down. I made a mistake. It was not Elohim, but Adonai. They would say. Uh, I made two more mistakes for the rest of the year. Well, actually, I'll surpass that in the next two minutes. So. Even that. 
All right. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Leviticus chapter 24. Just because I just opened that book, there's no rhyme or reason why I did, but Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus chapter 24. What is the second word in Leviticus 24, verse 1? It's what? Lord, and how is it spelled? And they're all capitalized. In our English Bibles, whenever you see the word Lord in all capitals, it's the one for Yahweh. It's the, the Lord, the I am who I am. It's Yahweh. So when you have, whenever you see Lord in all capitals, it's the word Yahweh. If it's lowercase, then it's one of the other names uh, for God. Uh, Adonai, Elohim, El Shaddai, Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. Anytime you see a name in Hebrew, in the English, ending in E-L, E-L is just the generic name for God. Uh, usually the, what goes on before that is describing who, what this God does. Uh, so, Emmanuel with us, El Shaddai, the God Almighty, the most powerful, and things like that. And so, you, you have that. So, um, when you get to Jesus' time, they would not say Yahweh, they would say Adonai. Now, in the Hebrew language, there are no vowels, they're all consonants, but underneath is what we call vowel pointing. I don't know, it's whatever. That they're, they're, they're vowel pointing for the vowels underneath, so that we who came generations later would know what, what the word is. In the Hebrew Bible, they would write the consonants for the letters of Yahweh, but underneath they would put in the vowel pointing for the word Adonai. And what you get is the word Jehovah. So Yahweh with the vowel pointing of Adonai is the word Jehovah. Now, Jehovah's not a real word. I mean, it's a made up word of two words together. So, uh, you know, I always cringe when, oh, Jehovah God. It's Yahweh. You know, when the Jehovah Witnesses come to my door, do you know that Jehovah's not a real word? It's more flush. They don't come to my door anymore. I do that too much. It flusters me. Uh, well, I think, I, I know the they do, I think my house is March. Because I, I see them walk by and they go, <laughs> I'm going, check their list. Oh, yeah, I've seen wait a minute, it. I want to talk to you. <laughs> my favorite discussion is with the Mormons. They're fun too. <laughs> Got it totally wrong, but they're fun too. <laughs> All right. Bottom of page. Um, 21. God uses his names to reveal who he is. There's always something happening when God uses his name. Like in Genesis 1 and 2, uh, the word is Elohim, meaning creator God. It's not Yahweh. Yahweh comes in way, comes later in the, in the book of Exodus. Um, and so God ties it to that. Now, in your catechism, Turn back to question number 42 and 43. 42 and 43. God reveals who he is through his name. What he has come to do. So, in Genesis 3, 13 to 15, I want you to write underneath that, the name that God gives to Moses. I already gave it to you. But what's the name that God gives to Moses? Yahweh. It's Yahweh. I am who I am. That's his personal name. That's a business card. Yahweh. When he calls and leaves a message, well, this is Yahweh. I am who I am. years 
to the birth of Jesus, um, in Matthew chapter 1, this is a dream that's given to Joseph. Joseph finds out that Mary's pregnant, but he's not the dad. Oh, okay. But then the angel of the Lord says to Joseph, you shall name his, his name shall be what? Jesus. Jesus. So under Matthew 1.21, I want you to write the word Jesus, which means what? Save us from our sins. So we could say when we're reading the Bible and Jesus, oh, the one who's come to save us from our sins. I wonder how different we our thinking would be if every time we saw the word Jesus, we didn't say just Jesus, we say, oh, the one who came to save me from my sins. Oh, that kind of puts a different perspective on things. Not Jesus, who plays second base for whoever. <laughs> so we have that. So we have Jesus. All right. 1 Corinthians 12. So not only is he the one who says, but what's the name that Paul gives to Jesus? No one can say Jesus is <coughs> Lord. Lord. Yeah. Lord. Now he put it in small letters, but you could, in the Greek that he uses, it's making reference to Yahweh. So Jesus is, I am who I am. The one who came to save me is the one who created the heavens and the earth. So you see how the scripture shows, oh, here's God's name, and this is what God is doing. And then the last one, Philippians 2, 10 through 11. I'm going to read it. So at the name of Jesus, oh, wait a minute, at the name of, oh, the one who came to save me from my sins, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that, G that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, we know what Jesus means. What does Jesus mean? Save. Come to save me from my sins. And we know what Lord means. I am who I am. What does the word Christ mean? Paul loves using the word Christ. Either Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. What does that mean? It's the technical term for the Ooh. anointed one. The glory of God the Father. Pretty, pretty close. It's the one whom God chosen to save us from our sins. So Christ is a technical term, meaning the anointed one, the Messiah, the Savior. So when you hear that Jesus, oh, the one who saved me from my sins, oh, he's the Savior, the anointed one whom God chose, and he's my Lord. We're going to see how that plays itself out in the third article of the Apostles' Creed, how, how Luther does a wonderful job in explaining that, that Jesus is my Lord, he's my Redeemer, he's my Savior. So we see this. We have, I am who I am. Oh, Jesus comes to save me from my sins. Oh, he's also Lord. So he's the same I am who I am. Oh, he's the Christ. He's the anointed one of God. This is the one whom the Trinity sends to save us from our sin. Pretty cool. All right. I think we're going to end up do, um, on top of page 22. Um, if you notice, I'm not really concerned whether or not I'm getting through all this stuff right away, because we'll catch up with the other commandments, but it's very important that we get these. Yes? The Old Testament's filled with the word Lord, with all capital yes. letters, and it was written that way because the Jewish people were afraid they would break the second commandment? Correct. But we know that saying the word Yahweh is not breaking the second no. commandment, so why haven't we changed it? Meaning, put it the not, Bible translators. Why haven't oh, they changed they just, it back to Yahweh? Well, that, that's what when they put that in there, they're telling us that is the word Yahweh, as opposed to one of the other lords. Because you got Adonai and El Shaddai, and all those could be translated as Lord as well. But when they put it in all capital letters, it's so that we know this is I am who I am. That's how the translators to let us know. Unless there'd be a lot of footnotes in the bottom of the page of our Bibles. So that's kind of what they do. They, they make the assumption that when we read that, we know that's the word Yahweh. Well, well there are some Bibles that actually... What it means. Well, some of the Bibles... I've read some Bibles that has the word Yahweh in it. I mean, it, it, they use Yahweh. But 
not everybody knows it. That's what I'm telling you now, so you could go look for a Bible that says Yahweh in it. Okay. Christmas is coming. <laughs> All right, grab a partner. Well, actually, do your table. Look at the list uh, you made in the first section. So you have the abuses, the honors, the names. Select two or three things from each of the abuses on our list. Review question number 44. Question number 44. And how do we first fear and love God by not using his name? And we swear to follow the seer of in vain as a curse word. And we manipulate that. So what I want you to write, I mean, we talked about that, but say, how do we do that? How does that happen in real life? How do we misuse God's name? One of the things that really, if you want to see the hair and just gets me going, is when people say the word gosh. Oh gosh. Well, what, what are you actually saying? Oh God. Are you doing it appropriately? Now, Luther says there are times and places when we should say out loud, Oh God, like we see an accident happen and we're saying, Oh God, help that person. That Luther says that we should be doing that all the time. But not, you know, you know, not using it the right way. And gosh, oh, my other one is my grandmother used to say this all the time. Uh, instead of damn, she would say, dog damn it. And we're going, my sister and I going, because we would go to Sunday school and we were told not to do that. And we're going, Grandma, what are you doing that for? I mean, that we, we, got, we want to come up so close to it, but remember, God's name is holy. You are using his name, and what are you using it for? For blessings or for curses? Let me tell you, God can curse by himself. He doesn't need our help to make that happen. But he wants us to use his name for blessings. So however you want to write that in there, and how he responds to the abuses, remember? Do not curse, swear, use satanalize, or deceive by his name. And then we honor that. How do we do that? In praying when we are in trouble. When we're praising God, when we're thanking him. God wants us to use his name. Yes. I would just go through and write down A, B, C, D. The question is asked in question number 44. You know, how do we misuse God's name? Well, when we thoughtlessly or meanlessly in vain use it as a curse word. When we try to manipulate God for our purposes. Like I mentioned in the court of law, I go in as well. Well, I used to, but not anymore. I used to chant on Bible. Yes, so I'll be God, yes. And I go up and I lie. You just broke the second command. If you know that you're lying, why did you just say, oh, this is God, not true? No, it's not. He's lying.
she switched the D and the G. Now that's an interesting one. Are you fixing socks? It's kind of like, gosh. <laughs> But when I hear those, I don't think of that. Yeah. All right. Are there times when it it is appropriate for you to swear in God's name or on God's name? Yes. What would be some of those occasions? Court of law. Court of law. Obviously, if I'm standing up there, promise tell the truth, hold truth, nothing but the truth. Where else? Every married person in here did this. Oh, baptism. Not your baptism. God <laughs> <laughs> makes a promise to you at your baptism. When, when I married my wonderful wife on June 27, 1992, I made a promise, swearing to God to the best of my ability that I will love, honor, you know, sickness and health, richer for poor, all that stuff. Um, you know, not forsaking her until death us do part. You know, that, I made that promise, and that was a good thing. There are times when you maybe are serving in different places, and they ask you, you know, you know, as a pastor, I made a promise in swearing before God that I'm going to do the best that I, that I, to my ability to be uh, a pretty heavily decent mediocre pastor. I think I've, I think I've succeeded in that, but uh, that as well. So there are times and places where that is appropriate. But, you know, when you, you do this, like, if my wife says to me, can you bring home a gallon of milk? I swear to God, I will bring home. I don't need to say that. Because <laughs> usually I forget anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, that we don't have to do that. But there are times and places where that is appropriate. And we should do that. And God honors that. He says, you should do that. And he's saying, you're putting my reputation at stake when you make that promise. So, you know, when I look at my wife and I make those promises, not only am I keeping that promise to her, but God's name, reputation, is at stake as well. And so I have to remember that as well. All right? No class next week unless I decide to wake you all up at 4 o'clock on the bus on Sunday morning and go through this stuff. But uh, no class next week. So we should bring our bride. No. Oh, thank you. Hey, what bus are you on? So, all right, have a good rest of your day. Have a great day. And Tristan, this will be up today sometime. <laughs> the other ones are up. I put them up this morning. I apologize. Every time I reminded myself, I should do that. There is a folder over here. Oh, everybody. So this one folder you put in. Yeah.